Honored to be here with judo legend Marty Malloy. Marty, good afternoon to you. How are you today? Hey, Matt. I'm good. Good to meet you. It's good to meet you as well. So your Twitter bio, it reads two-time judo Olympian and all-the-time cat enthusiast. <laughs> What's happening? I was mouthing it because I knew what you were going to say. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of cats. Every cat I've ever met, it always hisses at me for some reason. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they're that different from dogs. They kind of guess at your nature. So if they feel that you don't like them, you know, they're not going to like you back, Matt. You know, dogs, I've never had a problem with. I've never been barked at. You know, the dogs just let me pet them all the time. Cats are just mean. I'm sorry. Maybe your cats are different, but my aunt's cat was the devil. I've heard some horror stories. And to be honest, I am definitely like a cat convert. I grew up, my mom actually bred chihuahuas, like toy chihuahuas yeah like purebred ones with the papers and everything so I was definitely like a dog person and then some point in college I turned to my husband then boyfriend and I said I want to get some cats and ever since then like I'm a cat person I love them I think they're just so cute and fluffy yeah okay well we're gonna go ahead and disagree there uh but I <laughs> convert you <laughs> I, I was actually on Facebook right before this interview, and, and uh, one of my Facebook friends posted a bunch of cat jokes. Weirdest thing ever, but I'm like, who better bring these up to than Marty Malloy, who will be you know, here doing an interview in you know, 30 minutes. So here we go. You ready for these jokes? Give it to me. All right. What's the cat's favorite movie? The Great Catsby. Okay. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. It gets better. What is the cat's favorite magazine? Good Mousekeeping. <laughs> Oh, that one's cute. Okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Why don't cats play poker in the jungle? This is not my favorite one, but whatever. Too many cheetahs. Uh, that's for anyone, not just cats. Yeah, you're right, you're right. This is the last one. I hope you like I saved the best for last. My kitten was having trouble watching her Blu-ray. <laughs> Turns out she just had the movie on pause. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that you find them so funny despite not being a cat person. <laughs> You know what? These, these cat dad jokes may actually make me fall in love with cats. There you go. That could be the recipe. Cat dad jokes. That's good. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's going to be on Shark Tank one day. You keep an eye out. So I know you started judo uh, young along with your brothers. What age were you able to, uh, to, to flip and destroy your brothers? I believe you started at six years old. Oh, that, so finally a question no one's asked me about that. Um, I had a younger brother, so I was flipping him around the minute he stepped on the mat. So that was like right after me. But my older brothers were actually, my older brother is pretty big and he used to give me the hardest time. Like, you know how they say like siblings aren't going to like go easy on each other. They're always going to be more competitive. I don't think it was competitive. It was like, he knew I could kind of take it. So he would like push me and make me work harder, which I always appreciated actually. <laughs> I have a twin sister. She's one minute older than me, and she uh, never lets me forget. And her and I did Taekwondo. We never did Judo, but Taekwondo, for some reason, is what my dad got us into really young. And I, you know, after one class, I'm like, I'm a beast. You know, I, I could be the next Taekwondo world champion. And so I remember we were, like, kind of kick fighting on the sofa, and she kicked me square in the mouth, knocked, knocked two of my teeth right out. I mean, it was absurd, and that was the day I realized that uh, athletics may not be in my future. That's so funny because I, I get often asked what is my worst injury in judo and I've had a couple bad ones but the earliest first injury I ever had was my brother Francis threw me and I broke my ankle when I was like 10 or so. So At least I, you landed on your feet. <laughs> kind of in a twisted way. <laughs> what were your initial thoughts on uh, the sport of judo uh, in its entirety at first? Did you like it or was it kind of like a did you like it the longer you did it for? Yeah, well, well, I thought about it differently for sure. Like when you're a kid, six years old, it's playtime and it's like see your friends and like do a bunch of weird things you never would do, which is like including throwing people, falling to the mat. And then um, I'm actually from a really small town. So it was also a way to like kind of get out into the world. And I'm from Pacific Northwest. So like Seattle would always be where we would drive to for judo competitions. Later on, I thought about judo as like, like my goal, right? It went from being like fun to like, wait, I'm kind of good at this to like, could this be something I kind of build my life and career around? And, and then I started thinking about it differently. I loved one of your Instagram posts uh, lately. It was a picture of you uh, really young. Uh, but you had posted once upon a time, there was a little girl who dreamed of going to Olympics and then she did. First, adorable <laughs> photo. Second, was there a specific moment in time, maybe in a specific competition, when you realized that the, really this was a possibility for you? I think it was not long before that actual photo because I specifically remember at my first tournament, I won a medal. 
So I'm holding a trophy in that picture. So I think that was like right after. Um, but at that time, my mom had actually pulled me outside after the tournament and kind of looked at me and been like, I'm so proud of you. You did such a great job. And when you're a kid, you don't think about like things in a bigger picture way. And that was kind of when I realized like, wow, like you, you can be really successful in something. And like, I, it's weird. I don't know what it means to always remember how proud my mom was. Like I have not gone through my life thinking of ways to impress her. It's not like my goal at all, but at the time as a kid, it means a lot. So message to all you parents out there. Always be proud of your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I little show and tell here. Ugh. So I decided to bring out my uh, whole medal collection and trophies. I got two of my trophies right here. I got my little participation trophy right here. I got this uh, from my gymnastics summer camp. Uh, you know, I, that day I remembered I finally mastered a handstand. My legs were still, you know, obviously bent. And the cartwheel I mastered, which my legs were still bent. So maybe not mastered, but I did earn myself a participation trophy. My parents looked at me. They're like, you're special. I'm like, <laughs> thank you so much. Participation trophies are great. I, I, I know you're not used to those. You probably get first place all the time. But for me, participation trophies are pretty great. Hey, man, props to you for trying something like gymnastics. I never did it. I do think it would have been something awesome to supplement judo because the number one thing you want to do is spin out of throws while you're flying through the air. So if you, like, are natural at doing flips in the air, it could help a lot. That's the one thing I wish I had tried. And I cannot do a handstand, so props really? to you. The yeah. one thing I could teach you at. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, like <laughs> a, a more experienced gymnast would be like, you're absolutely horrid. But, you know, for you, it's a start. Yeah, I'd love to. I might be too dense. <laughs> I'm just afraid because I'm a little out of shape. As I told you before the interview, I was walking up the stairs and I definitely felt it today. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> if I try to do a handstand, I'm pretty sure I'd break my face. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's been a little while. But actually, it would be cool if you could or if you had done gymnastics and then matched that with judo. You would have been able to do some freaking amazing moves. Yeah, it would have been epic. I, I would have been curious how that turned out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, maybe, so, maybe someone in the future will do it. Yeah, I, there are a few people, I'm, it's escaping my mind right now. I, I want to say the name, but I don't want to say it wrong, of a few high-level judo people that had done gymnastics before, but they got great hips, spinning yeah. out of stuff. <laughs> gotcha. So in 2012, we not only went to the Olympics, I'm sure you've been asked this question, but I love asking Olympians this question, and won a bronze medal. In, in that moment, how did that feel? Because really, you had been training most of your life for this moment. You received the medal. How did that feel? I'm sure because I know you've talked to Olympians in the past, Matt, that it kind of takes time to kick in. So like initially following it and like knowing you won the match, it's, it really is kind of a state of shock and like grappling with the reality of like what you always wanted, you've just achieved. There's, there's thousands of people around you cheering and holding up American flags. There was an aspect of like, I really wanted to look up into the stands and see my parents and my coach but I was so overwhelmed, I was like seeing nothing. Like you look up there and you don't see anything. Um, it's more after when you kind of have time to let it sink in and then you kind of go, wait, like I really made that happen. And going back to what you said about that kid picture, um, I had just come across the picture somewhere on my phone and then I, it kind of struck me of like who that little girl was and then like who I'd become and like what she had no clue, what the journey was gonna be like, and how hard it was gonna be. And that at the end you were gonna be successful and accomplish your goals. So just that juxtaposition of like there once was a girl who like thought about it and then she did it like that dream and reality aspect is like super nice to feel super satisfying also makes you look back on the whole journey a lot if, if you had told that little girl that in you know really just you know several years that you'd make it to the olympics you probably wouldn't have even needed gymnastics you would have done a backflip right there wouldn't you have <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I would have believed it. I would have been like, who's this crazy old lady? <laughs> <laughs> of course, in the moment, stepping on the Olympic stage, really not just for your mother, but like actually competing in the Olympics, how do you bring yourself back to, back to reality in a way? Because the Olympics, for me, just as a spectator, it seems like it's beyond, you know, like real. It, it just seems crazy. So I can't imagine what it's like for, for athletes. In that moment, I was reading an article about you that, that you listened to a girl on fire a lot, which is, is a great song. Is that one of those things you do to kind of bring yourself down and get ready for competition? I love someone who does some good research. I love that song. And every time it comes on, Matt, I think about that build up to the Olympics or even, you know, judo has a four year qualification process. So I would think about how many hundreds of thousands of times I listened to that song to get me pumped up. And you really like, if you go into judo, even in training, not just competition with like, I am a girl on fire, like, I'm so lit up with energy and motivation and power 
that there's nothing that can hold me back. It's really like my biggest pump up song, but you're right. The Olympic village, it's crazy. The Olympics itself is crazy. It was actually like a truly honoring experience for me to have my best friend Kayla take a gold medal at that same Olympics that we went to. Like we, her and I always say like, you cannot write these things. Like you cannot write a plot that's going to play out the way things did for us. And, um, yeah, it's just amazing, <laughs> amazing experience. Yeah, it was obviously well deserved. Now, where do you put your medal? One of the most shocking things for me, whenever I ask Olympics that, quite a few of them have told me that they've lost their medal. I'm like, what in the hell is wrong with you losing an Olympic medal? Where do you put yours? Um, I, I'm looking at a little dresser across my room, and it's just like in that drawer. And it's been there, unfortunately, almost all of shelter and play or quarantine time because uh haven't been traveling haven't been going and teaching seminars and letting kids get their hands on it but it's something that you kind of tuck away you know it's just a thing in the end the big thing is like you said like the memory of what happened like the the metal represents it but it can never replace like just remembering the experience itself yeah i have my participation trophy on my fridge i have my chest trophy right here uh <laughs> and, and right there so every morning when i wake up i just look to my right i'm like you know what look at what i've accomplished here <laughs> Well, it's going back to Kayla, because there's a story she told me, which I never forgot, which is that when she first became world champion in 2010, she did like a elementary school kind of thing where kids got to hold her medal. And when it got back to her, it was broken. Like it had, they'd snapped it like from the base that holds it to the circular part. And I always remember that. So when kids hold my medal, I'm like, be careful. <laughs> because, like they are breakable. <laughs> You're like, if you break my medal, I'm going to judo slam you. Yeah, I, w I was like, I don't know how you kept your cool in that situation. I would have been like, what? I would have been like, you break it, you buy it. Yeah, and I just said that right after I said it's just an item, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then to go to the Olympics twice, I've, I've talked to, you know, a few Olympians who have only gone one time, which was a remarkable experience, but to be able to go twice, the second time, was it more of a level of comfort being that you had already sort of experienced Olympics, or kind of was it more pressure being that you meddled in your first Olympics? Yeah, you get it. It it I it can go either way, and it depends on the athlete. You know, they say ninety nine percent of any performance or 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 competition is your mindset, and that's a hundred percent true. If you are not completely focused and you don't, if you have anything kind of holding you back, it will show in your performance. And I looking back now with oh my gosh, how many years has it been? It's already been one Olympic quad, so four years. I can easily look back and say, like, I definitely felt pressure and I wanted to make sure I performed. And that resulted in me not performing as well as I could. Um, and then obviously there are people who go in and relish that and they perform well under that pressure. So, you know, it is what it is. You train, you, you have the outcome and then you keep moving. Yeah. Well, you're certainly one of a kind athlete uh, and, and yeah. being in not one but two Olympics shows that you are the best of the best. Now, besides Kayla Harrison, obviously breaking her medal, were there any bizarre moments over the course of your training or in competition for you that kind of pop into mind? That's something like really bizarre. Um, bizarre. I'll give you a second. Usually people have to think about it. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything on the spot. It was pretty normal. You know, we just, we're really professional. And that's why I think we made a really good team is because like we were up early to train. We were eating right. We we're sleeping right. Getting sleep at night, training every day. We didn't really leave time for any shenanigans or weird things to happen in between. <laughs> not saying we're completely innocent, but nothing big stands out. I gotcha. Now, if you yeah. could be an Olympian in a different sport, which sport would you want that to be? I'm talking like ping pong. I'm talking bobsleigh. What sport would you want to compete in? <laughs> I think they, they call it table tennis. <laughs> Whatevs. I'm just saying that, you know why I say that? Because at my very first Olympics, Kayla and I, you have a roommate in your dorm at the Olympic Village. and we had the entire table tennis Olympic team females in our dorm with us. So we got to meet all of them. I don't know if you heard of Ariel Singh and a few yeah. other girls around the team then. Um, so they kind of told me that. That's why I was giving you <laughs> for that. Um, I love handball. Is it, I actually don't think I'm – which sport is that? So you basically think of it as basketball freeze tag. Like if you have the ball, you can't move if you're holding the ball. And so you have to like pass it down and then you like jump and score like in a net on the other end. We have a game we play at San Jose State um, for warming up where I do where I train and coach now um, called Piggy, which is very similar. You have a little small ball that you pass to each other down the mat till you get to a goal. And so handball is really similar. And it's just so fun. I'm obsessed with Piggy. So I think handball would be just like playing. I would feel like I was playing all day. 
Yeah. I feel like there are a couple sports that should be added to Olympics. Uh, first, we got bowling. I, uh, I suck at bowling, but I, I love it. Like bowling for me is a lot of fun. That should be an Olympics. And then the second one, one that I'm actually pretty good at, hence my two beautiful trophies over there. Thank you very much. Chess. Chess should be in the Olympics. I, I mean, sure, it's not athletic. But I will tell you, it exercises your brain. I don't have a six-pack down here, but I have a six-pack of the brain from all that chest training. Marathons up above. That's right. It's, awesome. it's, it's, it's like two miles of practice to play chess. Chess mm -hmm. should be in the Olympics. And if, you know, if, if I weren't a chess champion in the Olympics, I think yeah, I would definitely want to do not ping pong, table tennis. Uh, now you're going to say that like that way for the rest of it. Um, and I would argue um, chess is really hard. I'm not arguing. Chess is very hard. I learned to play when I was a kid. I've always had respect because I've never been able to do it at a high level. So props to you. Yeah. We're going to have to do an exhibition. The Mind Olympics. The Mind Olympics. That, that is it. And we also have the Positivity Olympics. I brought it up to a few Olympians. We should do the Smiling Olympics. And basically, basically, it's like smile. And the amount of times you can smile in like, say, a minute. And then whoever, I mean, smiles. Them. And I'm, but it takes muscles of the face. Dude, to be able to do I that. know. Sometimes I'll do like seminars and I'll always try to meet all the little kids afterwards. There'll be a line of like 50 of them and they're so cute and they're so funny that I'm laughing and smiling the whole time. And in the back of your head, there's this spots right here that start to like ache and almost like, like <laughs> cramp up from smiling too much where I'm literally like pulling my cheeks down. <laughs> that does happen. That does happen. I have to ask you this question. I know for a fact you've been asked it about a trillion and three times, but the primary sport I cover is mixed martial arts. I knew you grew up training with Ronda Rousey. Uh, you're, you're best friends with Kayla Harrison, who is someone I've been trying to get on my show forever. Uh, but anyway, is there any chance, any chance we'll ever see you in the cage? Oh, no, never. never. No. Why? Um, well, so one of the reasons that I – so 2016 was my last Olympics and then I went one more year to try and become a world champion before I decided to retire knowing that I wasn't going to 2020 and even before my last competition at the worlds in 2017 just a few weeks a month or two before I herniated a disc in my lower back which was an injury from 2009 that came back to bite me doing a kettlebell swing of all things oh, and geez. it kind of just nailed it home for me because there were, I was still like man 2020 the Olympics returned to Tokyo the birthplace of judo like so much history there like I I just desperately wanted to be a part of it but my body was kind of telling me other things and I'm, I'm pretty glad that I made that decision at this point because like I'm in my 30s but it, things aren't as easy as they were a decade ago so who knows what kind of injury might have come along and, and kind of made things harder for me later. So I'm happy with that. But MMA, like going in, getting punched, getting kicked, having to train at, cause I, you have to do it at the highest level, Matt, right? Like if you're going to be, if you're going to do it, if you're going to commit to it, you have to commit 100%. And I definitely have that mentality. So I would have to be all in and I'm not about to go back to that intense training life. Like yeah. I put 20 years or so into that and I, I'm ready to move away from the physicality. I like coaching though. I really love helping people who kind of want to aspire to similar things I've achieved get there given my experience doing it. Yeah, I totally understand. I respect that decision. Now, seeing the success with Kayla Harrison, with Ronda Rousey, judo and mixed martial arts, do you think that we'll see, we'll see more athletes from judo cross over into mixed martial arts? Yeah, for sure. I think it's just kind of a matter of time. I don't know who. I don't have any insight info, but it just makes the most sense for people who want to stay in a you know, like martial arts but maybe don't want to do judo. Judo is really hard. I'm not saying MMA isn't, but – Judo is really hard. <laughs> yeah. Again, I respect your decision. Before the interview, I was prepared to, to make you a deal. Like, if you were to cross over in MMA, I would consider getting one cat and maybe two cats. But, you know, I, 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 think it's, I think it's better for the both of us so we don't have to go through this. Well, I mean, if you're willing to barter, let's – no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I think that I would have a really good, like, right – there's a hook, right? Yeah. Right hook. Because this – in judo, that was my power arm. Like, I would throw the high arm over and clinch people down to control them. So I think that would definitely be like what I would go for. And then definitely groundwork. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really do. Rustling, judo, those are the best aspects, in my opinion, uh, the best components for mixed martial arts. Because you could be a great boxer, but if you're rustling defense, if, you, if really you get taken down, then you're going to have trouble. So being able to dictate wherever the fight goes, if you don't want to stand, you take it down. 
it, it's just always in the wrestlers. Uh, it's always in the judo's uh, favor, you know? Yeah, and speaking of wrestling, that was the other sport that I, uh, you think, oh, what other Olympic sport would you do? You would think you would do something very different from the sport you do. But I also think wrestling is just awesome to watch. I have a lot of respect for those wrestlers. It is very similar to judo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think it would have been phenomenal in that. So you now are a digital marketing expert. I'll be honest with you. I don't really know what that means since I'm like 85. I don't do technology. But I am curious, any of your judo experiences, training, competition, has it kind of helped you in that field in any way? Yeah. Oh man, for sure. So I, my, you said, I don't know what that is, but I, I keep it broad because I do a lot of different marketing, different, th different jobs at my current job. Um, I'm at a company called my health teams and we basically create social networks, platforms for people with various chronic diseases to come together and meet each other to kind of have the best resources and outcome for whatever that chronic disease is. And we're right at the intersection of like digital health and technology. So I touch a lot of different things like back end web, web stuff, marketing, um, definitely a lot of social media. But the crazy thing about my job, and this is to your question about does judo help, is we support 40 different chronic diseases. And we have Facebooks and Twitters and social media pages for every single one. And so I manage a uh, a calendar for 40 different individual brands so taking that intensity from judo that is like dig in get it done check those boxes um do the best you can i always believe training should be quality over quantity right i would rather you do five perfect uchikomis like in and outs in judo than 50 really really fast and terrible I think the same thing about work and how i do things so it's definitely helped a lot because that kind of discipline helps you I think do a quality job, but also be able to get things done when you have a lot to get done. <laughs> Has COVID impacted your job at all? That seems like uh, COVID may have made it a little interesting. Yes, it has. I mean, I don't want to say in a good way because there's nothing good about it, but people have turned to digital technology and online to find help and support, support more than ever. And a lot of that has to do with telemedicine, telehealth. So one of our big thing, our mission for our entire company is to serve these people living with these diseases that make their life a lot harder. And so with COVID, our goal has been to like create resources that get them the information they need that's accurate, mm -hmm. medically reviewed, and isn't going to be like some snake oil fluff stuff that's going to lead you the wrong way when it comes to your health and when COVID is just so dangerous. Yeah, telehealth has been absolutely incredible. Again, I don't do technology, but both my parents are therapists uh, and they've been able to really help their clients still even despite this pandemic, just because of how advanced technology is, re really just kind of like this. So it, it is, it's pretty incredible. Uh, keep making the difference that you are. That, that is absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna leave the floor to you. Of course, anyone you'd like to thank, uh, how can people find you on Instagram, on Facebook, all that good stuff? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm on Instagram, Marty Domus. I think Twitter, I'm Marty Domus too, kind of like Nostradamus. Comes from um, me always being able to predict the ends of movies. Ask my husband, it's true. Um, I'm on Facebook, Marty Malloy, US Judo Athlete. I, I'm super looking forward, Matt, to like when things do return to normal, hopefully next year, and cheering on a lot of my teammates who are gearing up for the 2021 Olympics. Um, for USA Judo, but I'm looking forward to getting around the country and teaching seminars again. I, I was doing it like once or twice a month pretty regularly until all this happened. So I just want to go out and see people and talk about Judo and, and share what I've learned. And that's what I, I'm looking forward to the most, I think. Yeah. Well, if you ever come down to St. Louis, let me know. You can teach me some moves. I mean, I, I, I tried Jiu Jitsu. I sucked at that. Maybe Judo is my calling. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you bit by bit and we'll have you throwing in no time. 